Hello, I'm Matt Spangler, Extension Beef Genetics Specialist at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And today I'm going to talk to you about genetic selection tools in beef cattle, specifically economic index values. So let's start with the fundamentals. The phenotype, what we see, is really the sum of genetic effects and environmental effects. If we break that down even further, we can say that the phenotype, or again, what we see, is equal to some mean, so you can think of it as a, a population mean, or within a breed, the mean of all animals within that breed, plus their genetic value or breeding value, that's really the cumulative effect of all genes that impact that trait, plus the environment and what benefits or detriments a particular environment had on the expression of a given trait. Now, the crux is, is that there are more than one trait that impacts the profitability of your herd. So it's not just increased weaning weight that drives your bottom line. It could be a culmination of a lot of traits. And so as we look through sire summaries or bull sale catalogs or AI catalogs, it's apparent that there's a multitude of EPDs for a multitude of traits. So how do you really narrow down what's important to you and make sense of all the information that you're given. Well, here's how you start. One, you need to clearly define a few things. One is your marketing objectives. At what point do you sell your calves? Do you sell them at weaning? Do you sell them at yearling? Or maybe you retain ownership all the way through the feeding phase. That's important to clearly define up front. Then another very critical component is, do you retain replacement heifers? So do you try to be both maternal and terminal in your breeding objectives, or are you solely one or the other? These things sincerely impact what traits you decide to put emphasis on. You also need to have a full accounting for your environmental constraints. So what's the availability and cost of feed, for instance? And what are the environmental conditions in which you rear cattle? So, for instance, are you in a, a climate that's extremely cold versus extremely hot, extremely wet versus extremely dry? And what's your availability of labor and the cost of that labor? All too often as beef cattle producers, we tend to assume that our labor doesn't come with a cost, but it most certainly does. So understanding that is critical to understanding what traits are important for you. Relative to labor, if labor is abundant, maybe calving ease isn't as critical as you might think. But if labor is sparse, then the ability for calves to be born unassisted is absolutely critical. So once you define these things, you can choose an economic index that supports what you've defined in terms of your marketing objectives and your environmental constraints. So multiple trait selection undoubtedly can be cumbersome, but luckily bioeconomic index values can alleviate the cumbersome nature of having to go through and select for multiple traits at the same time. So essentially H here is the economic index value. And it's really the sum of a group of EPDs that are relevant to a particular breeding objective multiplied by their economic weight. So here I have an example of, of three EPDs, each multiplied by what I denote as A, which is their economic weight. So a way to think of this is, is, let's say that my breeding objective is completely terminal, and I market all calves on a defined grid. So in that case, obviously growth and carcass merit is extremely important to me. So traits in my index might include things like carcass weight, feed intake, and, and marbling score, for instance. So these economic weights are determined by asking the question, if I hold everything else constant and it increase carcass weight by one unit, how much does that change my overall profit? And so that's essentially what these economic weights represent. And I've listed here uh, a group of breeds that publish at least one economics 
economic index value. Angus, Charlet, Gelvy, Hereford, Limousine, Red Angus, and Simmental. And some of them publish both what I would consider maternally focused and terminally focused index values. And there is no question that using indexes is the best widely available method to practice multiple trait selection. So how do we decide if the indexes are terminal or maternal? I've listed here two categories or two lists where I decide or determine whether or not they're terminal or maternal. So Angus's dollar beef, dollar feedlot, and dollar grid values I consider to be all terminal. Simmental's terminal index, Hereford's certified Hereford beef index, Limousine's mainstream terminal index, Gelvy's uh, efficiency profit index and feeder profit index, Charlet has a terminal sire index which is actually interactive uh, whereby you can enter certain parameters about your herd and it'll list a, a group of sires that may be the best fit for your particular herd. And then Red Angus's Grid Master Index. On the flip side, the maternally focused indexes would be Angus's Dollar Wean Calf Value or Dollar Energy Value, Simmental's All Purpose Index, Hereford's Baldy Maternal Index, Brahmin Influenced Index or Calving Ease Index, Red Angus's Herd Builder Index, and Gelvy's Dollar Cow Index. It's a long list of indexes, no doubt, and that's why it's important that you clearly define what your goals are so you can find the index that best fits you. So I want to provide a couple of examples of how these work. So we're going to use, to start off with, an example of Simmental's Terminal Index. So let's assume we're comparing two bulls, and bull A has a, a TI value of 75, and bull B has a TI value of 82. So let's further assume that these bulls were used over four years, and on average over those four years, sired 20 calves, 25 calves uh, each year. So from that we could assume that bull B would generate, on average, $700 more revenue than bull A. And I get that by the difference between their two TI values, which is 7, assuming that they sire 25 calves a year over four years. So these index values, when used appropriately, can determine the added value of one sire over another. Or another way of thinking of it is, is how much more is one sire worth to me compared to another? So let's go through another example. Let's use Angus's dollar wean calf value and assume that bull A has a dollar W value of 35 and we're comparing him to bull B that has a dollar W value of 45. And the same assumption. Each bull would be used over four years and sire 20 calf, 25 calves on average each year. So if we go through the arithmetic again, we can say that calves from bull B the cumulative effect of those calves from bull B would generate $1,000 more revenue than from bull A. So I get that from a $10 difference between their dollar W values times 25 calves per year over four years. And again, um, that can be used to determine which bull is more valuable to you. But only if you follow the guidelines of the index or the assumptions of the index. And here the dollar W assumptions are that uh, you're actually selling calves at weaning and retaining replacement heifers. So if that scenario fits you, it's a very appropriate index. However, if you're uh, completely terminal and uh, retaining ownership on calves and selling on a grid, there's more appropriate indexes for you to use. So there's another method of multi-trait selection, and it's called setting up independent culling levels. And so this example was put together by Dan Mosier some years ago in 2005. And admittedly, um, the, the traits and, and perhaps their averages have changed, but I think the example is still very appropriate. And this is a Herford-based example. 
where we sit down and say, the only bulls that we're going to consider have to have a calving ease direct EPD of 2.1 or greater, a weaning weight EPD of 43 or greater, maternal milk EPD of 18 or greater, scrotal circumference EPD of 0.9 or greater, and an intermuscular fat percentage, which is a, a proxy for, for marbling, of 0.04 or greater. So if we look through this list of four bulls, uh, we can quickly see that some bulls fit those independent colon criteria and others don't. So for example, bull number four falls short uh, in terms of our threshold for calving ease direct, but he excels in terms of weaning weight, um, certainly very comparable in terms of maternal milk, uh, very comparable in terms of scrotal circumference, and excels uh, the majority of the other bulls in terms of better muscular fat percentage. But because he fell short for one of the criteria, if we held strong to those, we'd ignore him. But if you look at the, the Baldy maternal index value, he's the one that we'd predict to return the most profit to our operation. So the problem with independent culling levels is, is that we can allow uh, a bull to fall short um, even just a little bit for one of those levels and we ignore him, whereby a economic index value allows for the superiority in other traits to make up for that slight shortfall in one. So economic index values really focus on the added revenue, decreased cost, or hopefully the increased profit that a bull holds to your particular operation. So to begin to summarize, it's important to concentrate on the traits that are economically relevant to your particular operation. So define what things really drive revenue and drive costs for your particular herd. And understand the differences between different sources of information and know that EPDs and economic, va economic index values are more valuable than actual records or ratios. And in fact, EPDs have been shown to be seven to nine times more effective at generating response or change than actual measurements alone. And know your costs and select on profit, not just revenue. So have some fundamental understanding of what it costs to run a cow per year. And this actually helps you determine what traits are important for you to select on in future generations. Multiple trait selection is critical and could become more cumbersome as we add more EPDs to the list that we already have. Economic index values do help alleviate this, but use index values that meet your breeding objective. For instance, using Angus's dollar beef value that focuses on carcass merit and growth could be counterproductive if you sell at weaning and retain replacement females. So make sure to use index values that fit your breeding objective. Of course, it's important to stay informed. And there are several resources that you can use to do so. One is beefefficiency.org, a website designed to focus on genomic selection, particularly related to feed intake and utilization in beef cattle. Another is the National Beef Cattle Evaluation Consortium website that has several recorded webinars focused on genetic selection tools and methods in beef cattle. And finally, of course, the University of Nebraska Beef Production website, beef.unl.edu. I've also listed a couple of written resources. One is a NEB guide, 1847, that lists all the available economic indexes in beef cattle, their assumptions, and how they can be used. I've also listed Beef Basics 2, part of the home study course offered by UNL Extension. Thank you.